This video is brought to you by a cup of coffee because I would I would not be here without it. <laughs> that's that's for damn sure. All right, I'm back at my sanctuary marketplace where I'm going to build a Minutemen government building. Sort of like a town hall, you know, like a Minutemen headquarters type of place. Where like, if you've done some shit, this is where you go to be dealt with. So for the floors, I'm using warehouse foundations. This is given to us by the mod Workshop Rearranged. If you don't have this mod, any foundation will work. It's really just personal preference. Uh, the dimensions are 3x5 for the main area, but I am covering up the stairs with what's going to be a patio, porch, breezeway kind of thing. So it sticks out a little bit more in the front. And for the walls and everything else, I'm going to be using the mod that I ported over to the Xbox since I'm on the Xbox. A lot of people ask me, yes, I play on the Xbox. But the mod is called Pre-War and Post-War Sanctuary House Kit. If you haven't seen it, it gives us objects that look like sanctuary houses where we can build our own. They aren't identical to the ones in the game, but you know, pretty damn close. Oh, and also, I didn't create this mod. I was just a big fan, got permission from the creator Parcel Studio and Games, and ported it over to the Xbox. I tried everything I could to get it over to PS4, but Sony is still being a little bitch about external assets. However, PS4 users, you can get Sanctuary objects similar to this with Unlock Settlement Objects base mod and also with the More Workshop Items mod, both of which will be linked in the description. Alright, so you see the pattern that I have here. Smaller windows in the corners and larger bay windows in the front by the doorway. We get a ton of wall choices with this mod, so you want to make sure that the outside blue walls or whichever color that you pick are mixed up a good bit where it doesn't look too repetitive. So for example, this is going to be a two-story building. So for the first level, I'm using the blue walls that have a trim towards the bottom. And when I move to the second level, I'm going to use the ones that don't have a trim. This helps mix up the textures and makes the building look more realistic. And it's the same concept for the inside white walls. You want to make sure that they match each other because we do have two options. We have panels, which is what I'm using, the long boards that go up and down, and also tiles like this, which are just white squares that match the outside blue part. So my advice, pick one and stick with it because when you mix them up, they just look weird. And if you're OCD, it's just going to bother you. So why, why would you do that to yourself? Do you see how everything is snapping together? Like the stairs that I placed down and now these walls? That's because of Workshop Rearranged. It makes the snapping system so much better. But again, if you don't have this mod and are having problems getting the stairs and walls to snap like how I'm doing it, a good workaround is to use warehouse floors or barn floors. I demonstrate this in one of my videos. I believe it's uh, Best Building Mods. I'll have a link to it in the description. So if you're having problems, check out that video. I show you a good way to get around it. Alright, so far so good. We have a few rooms and the stairs here are centered with the doorway. That's going to look really cool when you see it decorated at the end of the video. Spoilers! Now I'm just going to place down the upper wood floors. I do leave a gap where the stairs are because I wanted the floor plan to be pretty open. That's how I picture most town hall and government buildings, right? And I really like how the stairs are set up here. I, I wanted this building to look sort of historic, even though I'm not using historic pieces like Bunker Hill, or stone walls that you see in capital buildings, you know. So I think the stairs, the setup here, really helps give off that vibe. All right, enough of me patting myself on the back for simply placing down some stairs. Moving on to the second level walls. I'm going to keep the same pattern as the first level. So smaller windows in the corners and bay windows in the front. Only this time, as I mentioned, I'm using the blue walls that do not have a trim towards the bottom. Also, we have two kinds of bay windows. The ones that are flush with the wall like this, and the others that I use on the first level that stick out. So you'll notice that I'm using the ones that don't stick out up here just to mix it up. Okay, so I finished placing the walls and now I'm moving over to the roofs. The roofs are pretty simple. I use these pieces that have that thing on top of I don't know what that is, but I use them in each corner and then I use angled pieces in the front so I can snap out a roof for the patio. But yeah, as that's going, the main idea for this build, I mean obviously it's a Minutemen building, but the reason I chose the Sanctuary House Kit is because, 
Well, one reason, people were having problems building multiple stories with this mod, so I want to demonstrate how to do it. It's very easy, as you can see. But another reason is because I wanted to stay true to Sanctuary. I wanted the main building of this place to be a big Sanctuary house, because I'm going to scrap some of the other houses. Not all of them, of course, but at least a couple. So I wanted to make sure that the fill of Sanctuary was still present in this build. Does that make sense? It sounded good in my head, but not so much when I say it out loud. Now nah, I'm sure it's fine. Alright, so I finished the roof, there wasn't much left to do, and right here I'm showing you how to cover up the gap in the wall. Now this mod gives us pieces to cover this up, but since I used wood floors, I wanted it to match. So instead, I used the crossbeams that we get from Workshop Rearranged. Moving right along to the front, I'm placing down warehouse support posts. The ones you see here are from Workshop Rearranged, but you get the same ones from the Contraptions DLC if you don't have this mod. Uh, the mod just gives you different sizes of them. And then to cover up the gaps at the top, I just stack some cross beams on top of each other just like I did for the walls in the back. Alright, so the last thing I want to show you, I did these parts as I was decorating, so I don't want to ruin much of the tour for you. But what I did was move the doorway out here, which made this office bigger. This is the general's office. My office. And upstairs, I added in walls on each side to make two more rooms. This one is Preston's office, where he can come up here and do absolutely nothing, except think about what he's going to make me do next. Like, I'm the general, okay, fucko? I tell you what to do. How about going to kill those raiders yourself and not make me do your dirty work? Right, okay, off topic. So for his secretary area, I wanted a check-in window. So to do that, I placed down two doorways next to each other, and then I snapped this railing that I got from the sanctuary mod between the doorways here, and then I got a glass wall from the Settlement Objects Expanded mod and used Place Anywhere to glitch it inside the doorway. But yeah, it came out pretty cool, so I hope you guys like it. That is it for the build. Stick around for the fully decorated tour, which is happening, like, like right now.
Alright, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and any questions you have, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Check out the link to the left for a video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. If you want more content like this, click that subscribe button to the right. And if you want to go a step further, you can follow me on Twitter at CorelessVII. Please give this video a like and I will talk to you soon.